This is the 10th lecture about basic electronics for clinical neurophysiologists. This talk is the last of a three-part series on filters in analog to digital converters. This talk will be conducted in a question and answer format. It will start from where we left off in part two of this series. First question, analog filters are not component of digital EEG machines. A true, B false. The digital EEG machine has some key components. These components are differential amplifiers, single-ended amplifiers, analog high-frequency filters, also called anti-aliasing filters, analog to digital converters, whose function is to transform continuous fluctuating electrical signal into discrete data points in the form of, a binary, of binary numbers. Other components of the digital EE machine are the digital filters. Digital filters include high frequency, low frequency, and notch filters. The last component of the digital EE machine is the monitor. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. High frequency filters are used as anti-aliasing filters. A true, B false. Aliasing is a term that we will discuss in depth when we talk about analog to digital converters. For now, let's say that the lower the frequency of the fastest wave presented to the analog to digital converter, the easy it is for the analog to digital converter to avoid aliasing. So, as previously stated, the purpose of placing a high frequency filter prior to the analog to digital converter is to avoid aliasing. This is done by eliminating high frequency rhythms that do not contribute to the value of the test. Thus decreasing the need for computation at the analog to digital converter. So the answer to this question is true. The three key attributes of analog to digital converters are the following, except A, sampling rate, B, input voltage range, C, amplitude level resolution, D, phase shift hampering. The three key attributes of analog to digital converters are sampling rate, input voltage range, and amplitude level resolution. So the answer to this question is phase shift hampering. Next question. High fidelity reproduction of a wave in a digital EEG machine is dependent on the sampling rate of the analog to digital converter, A true, B false. As I have just mentioned, the function of an analog to digital converter is to convert continuous fluctuating current into discrete numerical data points in the form of binary numbers. Thus, one of the attributes of an analog to digital converter in order for it to do its job is to have an appropriate sampling rate. In the next few frames, I will address this issue. I will illustrate the importance of choosing an EG machine with a good analog to digital converter by comparing two imaginary waves. One generated by the transformation of an analog 
signal to a digital signal when processed by an analog to digital converter with a sampling rate of 102 per second. The other imaginary wave I will use for comparison is one done by an analog to digital converter with a sampling rate of only 10 per second. Let's start by looking at the transformation of an analog signal to a digital signal when processed by a 102 sampling per second analog to digital converter. In this frame, I have added an analog signal lasting one second. The arrow close to, to it indicates that it is going into an analog to data converter. The analog to data converter has a sampling rate of 102 data points per second, separated by an equal distance from each other. I have included in this frame the digital wave reconstructed from 102 data points. As you can see, the digital signal is very similar to that of the analog signal. On the other hand, if the analog to data converter, instead of having a 102 per second sampling rate capability, has a 10 sampling rate per second capability, only 10 points at an equal distance from each other will be presented to represent the signal. This will, when reconstructed, unfaithfully reflecting the shape of the analog signal coming into the analog to digital converter. So the answer to this question is True. Next question. The sampling rate required to faithfully reproduce a rhythm is six times the fastest frequency of interest in the signal. A true, B false. The two gentlemen in this photograph were great mathematicians. Both had a lot to do, perhaps indirectly, with digital EEG. Yet, of the two gentlemen, the one most recognized is probably Dr. Nyquist. He is recognized for saying that in order to faithfully reproduce a rhythm, we need to sample it at least twice the frequency of the fastest rhythm constituting it. The 2006 recommendation from the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society is to use a sampling rate of at least three times the fastest component of the rhythm. Yet today, we say that probably a good sampling rate is six times the fastest rhythm we want to capture. So if we want to analyze a rhythm whose fastest frequency is 70 Hz, we must get an analog to data converter that will take 420 samples every second. If one wish to sample a rhythm whose fastest activity is in the 100 Hertz, we need to get an analog to data converter that will take 600 samples every second. If one wants to analyze a rhythm whose fastest activity of interest in this is in the 500 Hertz, we must get an analog to data converter that will take 3,000 samples every second. And if we want to analyze a rhythm with the fastest activity in the 1,000 Hertz range, we must get an analog data converter that will take 6,000 samples every second and so on. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Using a sampling rate of a thousand data points per second to analyze a rhythm with the fastest frequency of interest of 70 Hertz leads to ali aliasing. A true, B false. 
you probably do not know who this character is. But if I tell you his alias, you would probably have heard of him. He's Billy the Kid. Yet, in the physic world, giving an alias or alizing something implies misrepresenting that something that is being aliased. So, failing to represent a rhythm by not sampling it at the rate of six times its fastest component of interest will misrepresent the rhythm and thus aliasing it. So, the answer to this question is true. Next question. The sampling rate and the dwell time are the same thing. A true be false. As we previously stated, we can refer to an analog data converter by its sampling rate. In this case, we would say we are using a 102 data point per second analog to data converter. This implies that in one second there are 102 points separated by the same distance. In this case, the distance without a point or between the points will be 9.8 milliseconds. The distance without a point, the sampling interval, is referred to as the dwell time. That is, in the case of 102 data points per second, the interval between each point data collected is 9.8 milliseconds. Thus, we talk about a dwell time of 9.8 milliseconds. If instead of a 102 sample per second analog to digital converter, we use a 10 sample per second analog to digital converter, the dwell time will be 100 milliseconds. So, the answer to this question is false. Next question. An analog to digital converter with a sampling rate of 1 per second will go on for 99 milliseconds without placing a point. A true, B false. I have in this frame represented an analog signal lasting one second. The activity, as you can see, is continuous. Now I am introducing in this new frame stopwatches to indicate time. So in this frame I have represented an analog signal lasting for one second. In this frame I have removed the analog signal to represent a digital signal being sampled at the rate of 1 per second. Using analog to data converter of 1 sample per second, if one sample is taken at 1 second from the analog signal, no sample will be taken at 1 second and 333 milliseconds from the analog signal. No sample will be taken from the analog signal at 1 second and 666 millisecond, but a sample will be taken from the analog signal at 2 seconds. This implies that no registration will be made of the analog signal for 999 milliseconds. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. What is the usual per second per channel sampling rate of an analog to digital converter used in EEG machine? A. 22,050 B. 44,100 C. 240 D. 10,000 Judging by the frequency of sounds that we can hear 
20 kilohertz and the frequency that we can make with our voices 4 kilohertz men and women were built to listen more than to talk so taking this into consideration as well as the Nikos postulate the engineers constructed the CD the CD with the capacity to reproduce all sounds audible by the human ear that is with a sampling rate of about 40,000 data points per second with a dwell time of about 0 0.023 milliseconds this corresponds more or less to 15 to 16 bits of linear resolution and they also contract, contracted a digital phone with a sampling rate of 8000 Hz. This corresponds to about 13 bits of linear resolution and a dwell time of 0 0.122 milliseconds. And finally, they constructed an, an EEG machine, that is a digital EEG machine, with a sampling rate of 240 to 480 data points per second per channel. That is with a linear resolution of about 8 to 9 bits and a dwell time of about 2 to 4 milliseconds. And so are the 2016 recommendations from the American Academy of Clinical Neurophysiology. Yet, not all books offer similar recommendation. In Jasper's book, the sampling frequency and the sampling interval is a bit different. They recommend for EEG to, sam to have a sam sampling rate of 200 Hertz, thus with a sampling interval of 5 milliseconds to have a brain auditory bulk response with a sampling frequency of 100,000 and with a sampling interval of 10 microseconds. Interestingly enough, the recommendation for brain auditory bulk responses in the 2006 American Clinical Neurophysiology Society is for it to be at a sampling interval less than 20 microseconds but the actual uh, limits of it was not established by this academy finally for emg the jasper book recommends 1 million sampling frequency per second and a sampling interval of one microsecond so the answer to this question is C. Next question. What is the minimal sampling rate for EEG recommended by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine in 2007? A. 70 B. 180 C. 200 D. 500 The filters for EEG recording during polysomnography in center not interested in epilepsy usually use a high frequency filter of 35 hertz and a low frequency filter of 0.5 hertz this is done to minimally affect frequencies in the low in the slow spectrum of brain activity but decreases our ability to detect spikes with this in mind the minimal sampling rate of EEG recommended by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine in 2007 was 200. They do say that the desirable sampling rate is 500 samples per second. This academy makes similar recommendation for other polygraphic analysis. For airflow, nasal pressure, esophageal pressure, respiratory movements, the Sleep Medicine Academy recommends a minimum of 25 
and it is zero of a hundred sampling per second. For oximetry, a minimum of 10 and a desirable of 25 sampling per second. And for body movement, one sampling per second. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. What is the recommended sampling rate for EEG by the American Academy of Sleep Technologists in 2012? A70, B180, C200, D500. I have just presented to you the recommendation by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. They are what you see in this frame. Please notice the word desirable in the subtitle. Now look at the recommendations made by the American Academy of Sleep Technologists. They are similar, except that the word desire has been changed for recommended. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. What is the usual per second sampling rate of analog to digital converter used in brain evoke auditory responses? A, 20,000, B, 8,000, C, 240, D, 10,000. Using the six time rule, if we use a high frequency filter of 3000 Hertz, the sampling rate should be more than 18,000 sampling per second. The recommended sampling per second in Jasper book is 100,000 sampling per second. So the answer to this question is 20,000, that is A. Next question. What is the usual sampling per channel when recording full band EEG? A, 240 Hz, B, 12,000 Hz, C, 562 Hz, D, 2,000 Hz. Filters and sampling rates choices depend on the machine capabilities and as you have noticed throughout this talk to the examiner's choices for regular EEG using a bandwidth confined by a high frequency filter of 70 hertz and a low frequency filter of 1 hertz the sampling rate of the analog to digital converter following the six time rule should be 420 hertz for full band EEG, where the activity of interest ranges from wave lasting one millisecond to a hundred seconds, the high frequency filter is set at one kilohertz or even at two kilohertz by some authors. The sampling rate using the six time rule should be 12,000 sampling per second. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. An ATC set with amplitude window too narrow for the signal being studied will only cut off the higher peaks of the signal. A. True. B. False. The second attribute of an analog to data converter is its input voltage range. To explain it, I will use a familiar figure. 
but this time in relation to input voltage instead of sampling frequency. To which I will assign, that is to the input voltage range, I will assign a value of 200 microvolts. So if the maximal amplitude of the analog signal is 180 microvolts, and as we said, the input voltage range of the analog to the ETA converter is 200 microvolts, then the sampling amplitude range of this analog signal will be such that at the time of its reconstruction, the data point value collected will yield a digital signal equal to the analog signal that produced it. This is because all the amplitude of the analog signal is within the input voltage range or window of the analog to digital converter. But let's say that instead of a 200 microvolt input voltage range, we use an analog to digital converter with an input voltage range of 100 microvolts. Then the voltage sampling rate of the analog signal would be such that at the time of its reconstruction, the data points value collected will yield a truncated digital signal at the highest and at the lowest value of the signal. So the answer to this question is false. Next question. What is the usual input voltage range or amplitude window of an analog to digital converter used in EEG machine? A plus or minus 5 millivolts. B plus or minus 1.023 millivolts. C plus or minus 5 microvolts. D plus or minus 500 microvolts. The input voltage range or amplitude window of most EEG machines is between positive or negative 1023 microvolts, as it was recommended by the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society in 2006. This is so in order to accommodate waves with an amplitude of up to 2046 microvolts. Again, this is according to the 2006 recommendation. The 2016 guideline rec recommends a dynamic range higher the dynamic range it recommends is of 3,276 microvolts, that is a plus or minus 1.638 millivolts. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. A bin has the same amplitude range in a 12-bit ADC regardless of the input voltage window, A true, B false. When we talk about amplitude domain of an analog to digital converter, we have to consider three factors. The first, first factor is the number of amplitude level given in a regular number or in bits. The second factor is the input voltage or amplitude window which we have already discussed. And the third factor is the amplitude pin. Linear dwell, as you know, is the time it takes for an analog to digital converter to sample the analog signal. Amplitude pin is the change in amplitude it takes for the analog to digital converter to register a new data point at each sampling time. Amplitude pin changes in relation to the input voltage range or amplitude window in the analog to digital converter. 
let's see that relation first considering what happens if we use an analog to data converter of 11 bits which corresponds to 2048 amplitude levels were we to use an analog to data converter with an amplitude window of 2000 microvolts the change in amplitude required for the analog to data converter to take a sample from the analog signal is close to 1 microvolt were we to use an analog to data converter with a sum with the same bits but with an amplitude window of 1000 microvolts the change in amplitude required for the analog to digital converter to register an amplitude change it would be at least 0 0.5 microvolts were we to use an analog to digital converter with this same bit but an amplitude window of 500 microvolts then the change in amplitude required for the analog to digital converter to register a change in amplitude is close to 0 0.25 microvolts please remember that the smaller the pin the better the fidelity of the analog to digital converter now let's see what would happen if instead of using an analog to data converter of 11 bits which corresponds to about 2048 amplitude levels we use one with 12 bits which corresponds to about 4096 amplitude levels were we to use an analog to data converter with an amplitude window of 2000 microvolts the change in amplitude required for the analog to digital converter to take a sample from the analog signal is close to 0 0.5 microvolts were we to use an analog to digital converter with the same bits but an amplitude window of 1000 microvolts the change in amplitude required for the sum for the analog to digital converter to register a change in signal is close to 0 0.25 microvolts were we to use an analog to data converter with the same bits but an amplitude window of 500 microvolts the change in amplitude required for the converter to register a change is close to 0 0.125 microvolts so the answer to this question is false b next question how many vertical bits should an analog to digital converter have for ep and eeg conversion a 12 b 8 c 2 d 6 the correct answer in the past was 12 bits the new recommendation is 16 bits which corresponds to 65,536 levels and using a regular window of plus or minus 1.638 millivolt per channel represents a resolution of 0 0.05 microvolts so the answer to this question at least for the moment is 12. Next question. When using an EEG machine with an amplitude resolution of 12 bits and a window of 2000 microvolts, a signal increase of 0 0.1 microvolt may translate to an amplitude change of 1 microvolts. True or false? Going back to a previously shown figure, the setting in this question refers to specifications pointed by the arrow. An amplitude resolution of 12 bits 
and an amplitude window of 2000 microvolts produce a beam setting of about 0.5 microvolts. So it will be about 0.5 microvolts, the maximal change that could be brought about by a 0.1 microvolt increase. So the answer to this question is B, false. Next question. A 16-bit analog to digital converter used with a 2000 microvolt window input would be able to produce a resolution of 0.03 microvolts. A, true. B, false. Were we to use a 16-bit for amplitude level and a size window of 2000 microvolts, the same as we have used in the past question, a change of 0 0.03 microvolts always will be registered. So the answer to this question is A, true. Next question. Digital filtering advantages over analog filtering includes all the following except A, easy storage of information, B, higher fidelity, C, allowing post-recording manipulation of data, D, avoiding end-of-the-chain phenomena. Bipolar montages, when recorded with analog equipment, are vulnerable to artifacts due to the end-of-the-chain effect. The end-of-the-chain effect made channels linked to FP1 and O1 more vulnerable to artifact because of only being connected to a ground in one amplifier. I will explain this a little bit further. Using analog equipment, the first and the last electrode of the chain in a bipolar recording are preferred only to one ground in one amplifier, as you can see in FP1 and in O1, whereas the middle electrodes F7, T3 and T5 in this montage are preferred to a second ground or to two grounds in one in each amplifier. The end of the chain phenomenon does not happen with digital equipment since with digital equipment, bipolar montages are reconstructed from previously acquired referential data and all have the same connection with ground. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Most EEG machines use finite input response filters. A true, B false. Most digital filters make use of mathematical wizardry to imitate the geometrical result of analog filters. In general, three methods are used for this purpose. The first of this method is finite impulse response. Finite impulse response has the benefits of being stable, producing a linear phase increase with little distortion, not having feedback or redundancy, and produce little noise. Finite impulse response has the drawback of needing large amount of operation in order to produce a signal and therefore requiring uh, a significant amount of time to work out the mathematical 
operations thus delaying the output of the filter. The second type of method used for data filtering is infinite impulse response. The infinite impulse response has the benefit of requiring few operation but has the drawbacks of being potentially unstable, producing non-linear phase shifts, having feedback of redundancy, and producing significant amount of noise. The third method of data filtering use is the fast Fourier transformer. Fast Fourier transformer has the benefit of producing sharper frequency cutoff than any of the two previously discussed methods, but the drawback of requiring large amount of computation, hence causing significant delay in its output. So the obvious choice for data filtering is finite impulse response devices. Therefore, the answer to this question is A, true. Next question. Finite impulse response filters function based on amplitude averaging. A, true, B, false. Finite impulse responses work by processing the numerical values in such a way as to use the preceding and following digitalized points to determine the vertical placement of a signal. Let's say, in order to understand this principle, that is the principle of finite impulse response filtering, that we use a filter with an order of five points. A finite impulse response filter with an order of five points uses two preceding samples and two following samples to determine the vertical position of a point in a recording. I will try to explain this in the next few frames. In this frame, I have introduced five white points. Now I have colored the midpoint in magenta. Thus we have two preceding and two following points in relation to the magenta color or central point. So the computer will take the two points preceding and the two points following the central point. Here, as we previously mentioned, represented in the magenta color. And the computer will then determine the average position of the central point by determining the average position of the four neighboring points. And then place the dot, which I have colored in aqua, in the appropriate location. With the appearance of the next point in relation to time, as I have shown in this frame, the computer moves to resolve the placement of the new point, which I have color magenta in this frame. This will be done following the two preceding and the two following points. So the computer now using the four neighboring points to the magenta point will assign the final position of the newly develop average, which in this frame I have colored in aqua. And with the appearance of a new point reflecting the passage of time, the process will start again. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. 
finite input response, low frequency filters, and high frequency filters function by modifying the weight given to preceding and following points. A true, B false. The math behind digital filtering for low and high frequency filtering is beyond my understanding. What I have summarized from reading confusing papers on the subject or by me confusing the information in non-confusing papers written on the subjects is that filters behave as a low frequency filter or a high frequency filter depending on the weight given to the neighboring points in relation to their distance from the center point. I will leave it at that and therefore go to answer this question and the answer to this question is true. Next question. Averaging can be used as a form of filtering. A true, B false. Averaging is probably one of the oldest modes of filtering. Repetition adds to a signal that has a temporal and a spatial consistency and subtract from a signal that lacks temporal and spatial consistency. It is interesting that, as it happens with lots of physical phenomena, the signal to noise ratio improves proportional to the square root of the number of sweeps. So, with four sweeps, the signal to noise ratio will improve two times which corresponds to 3 dB. With 64 trials, the signal to noise ratio will improve to 8 times, which corresponds to 9 dB. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Paper EEG is dead. A true, B false. There's no doubt about it. Paper EG is dead. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. What is a pixel? A. A fixed unit of measurement. One pixel is equal to 0.25 millimeters. B. The smallest addressable element in a screen. C a variable unit of measurement ranging from 0 0.25 to 5 millimeters d none of the above a pixel or picture element is the smallest addressable element in a display device a computer screen is measuring pixels we can think of pixels as geometrical figures usually a square or variable size in this frame, the arrow points to one pixel. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. What percentage of a computer screen pixels are considered border pixels? A, 5% on each side, B, 10% on each side, C, 15% on each side, D, 1% on each side. A computer screen has regular pixels that can be used for computation and border pixels. Border pixels do not count for computation. They may constitute up to 5% on each side of the screen. So the answer to this question is a. This uh, answer requires further explanation because with newer computers and newer screen, the amount of border pixel has been decreasing precipitously. But for now, A is the proper answer. Next question. A computer monitor would need a horizontal resolution of at least dash pixels 
in the data display or regular pixels. A, 1200, B, 1400, C, 1600, D, 1800. Regular pixels must at least be 1400. So the answer to this question is B. The digital screen and video card must at least be dash pixels for displaying and scoring EEG. A. 1600 by 1200 B. 1500 by 4200 C. 3600 by 1800 D. 4200 by 2200 A computer used for EEG must have at least 1200 vertical pixels and 1600 horizontal pixels. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Too much flickering indicates a too low refreshing rate. A true, B false. No flickering is better than flickering. Look at the edge of the screen to look for flickering. If you see any flicking at all, it's usually too much. Flickering indicates too slow refresh rate and a bad screen or computer. The best thing to do if you see flickering is to buy a new computer or a new monitor. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. In a monitor used for EEG reading, one vertical millimeter should be represented by at least dash pixel A2, B4, C6, D10. The American Clinical Neurophysiology Society in 2006 recommended at least four pixels per vertical millimeter. The EEG primer recommends at least 2 pixels per millimeter. They both agree that the horizontal resolution should at least be 4 pixels for 1 millimeter. This represents 100 pixels in 25 millimeters, or 100 pixels per second. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Each second of EEG displayed should contain at least dash data points and occupy dash millimeters. A, 125, B, 130, C, 150, 30, D, 150, 25. Prior recommendations have been to use 100 pixels per second. In the latest recommendation, the number given is 128 pixels per second on a screen able to hold 10 seconds of recording. The number 128 cannot be converted to millimeters without violating the integrity of a pixel. 128 pixels divided by 25 millimeters will come out to be 5.12 pixels. So at least for now, the answer to this question is A. Vertical digital spacing of EG channels should be at least dash millimeters A15, B20, C25, D30. In the 2006 American Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommendations, they advise a vertical scaling of 10 millimeters between channels. 
This recommendation was again given in 2016. The EG primer recommends 15 millimeters of spacing between channels. When digital EG is used and 20 millimeters for paper. So the answer to this question is A, 15. Thank you. This is the last uh, segment of a three-part series on filters and analog to digital converter. Thank you again.